All right, the last video we went ahead and learned how to change scenes. We've set up our main menu scene and we got it set to be the first scene that is loaded, I believe. Let me just quickly check here. Ah, yes, it's set up to be the first one. So we want to go ahead and create this main menu. I'm just going to do something really simple, maybe something with a title, a nice little panel around it, and a button that just says play that brings me to the play screen or brings me to the scene to play. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this sphere. We don't need it anymore. And we worked with the UI element before. We went and learned how to use text. This time around, we're going to be making a button. But I am still going to start off. Well, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead. We'll start off with the button. Let's go ahead. We'll click it. And of course, we get the canvas, which I'll rename right away. Actually, I wanted to do a panel. I want to put the panel inside of there. I could just add the panel here. And I will. Yeah, we'll just do it this way. So let's go ahead and we'll come down to UI. We'll come down to panel. Panel really is just an image. And we can see it filling up the screen here. I'm going to switch over to 2D since this is all we're going to work on. It might as well be in 2D. I'll zoom out a bit. There we go. Now, of course, as I said before, the aspect ratio or the, the dimensions here change as you change the dimensions of the play screen. But I'm just going to keep it here for now. 60 by 9 is what I intend to have my game running on. So this panel, this is what I'm going to call main menu. I'm just going to take this button and make it a child of that main menu. Now, whatever I do to that main menu is going to affect the actual button itself. And to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and bring this in a bit. Let's say uh, 150. Uh, let's do the right 150. Uh, we'll do the top what, negative 100. Whoops, wrong way. We just want 100. And of course, the bottom, 100. There we go. I guess I can bring the sides in a bit more. But you get the idea, right? Go ahead, shape it to taste. I want it to be in the center of my screen, which it starts off by default. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and also throw a title in up here. And I want it to be near the top of the panel. Now, since we have this text, which I'm actually going to put above the button. Whoops, I put it in the button. We'll look at the button in a bit. There we go. Now, since I have it above, or sorry, inside of the panel, when I go ahead to position it now, and I want to put it up at the top. And let's put everything up at the top. We notice that it's at the top of the panel and not at the top of the canvas. So going ahead and setting up all of these little panels for maybe if I had like a side panel for UI, uh, a lot of games have that little action bar down at the bottom of the screen. You go ahead and set a panel up there. It makes positioning all of your UI elements pretty easy if you keep it in a panel. But I just want this to be the title, so I can't remember what we called our game. I don't know, Evil QB Shooter. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead, and before I go ahead and position, I'm going to change the font size. That's not something bigger, maybe a 28, which is too big there. So height wise, I'm going to do probably something pretty big here, maybe 68. Uh, we're going to go have a bigger width. Well, to be honest, I'm going to go ahead and max the width. So by holding down shift and alt, it means stretch this element out according to the whole width of the screen or the panel that it's in, I should say. So I'm going to come down, I want to make sure it's centered. I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit off of the, well, center inside of this box. So it brings it down a little bit off of the top. And I could go ahead, and I'll go ahead and add some shadows and whatnot. I want a pretty big shadow on this one, maybe a five. Um, I'm going to change the color. Evil cubes are red. Let's go ahead, we'll make it red. But let's also give it a bit of an outline. And one point outline is good enough. I don't have any fonts loaded. Don't even want to bother touching fonts. Simple game. Let's just get through the lesson. Let's look at the button. So it'll come down. We'll notice right away that the button has a child object, which we open up is the text. And it's just a simple text that we've just played with. It's the exact same thing. And this text is what appears on the actual button itself. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just change that to play. And you can go ahead and style it any way you want. Uh, what I want to do is actually look at the button script here. So we've gone ahead and covered Rec Transform before. Uh, the image is just the actual image of it. Uh, the button script, I have a previous video on how to play around with these. I'm not going to cover it right now. I'll put a link down in the description on where to go watch that video. But I will be covering this again in a, a later video for this course. So right off the bat, I want my button to be a little bit taller. So let's do uh, maybe twice that. 60 sounds good. And make the play text fold. There we go. Now let's add some functionality to this script. Now generally, if I have a lot of UI elements, I'll have one script maybe on this particular panel. Let's say I had a diff few different buttons. I'd go ahead and create one script and go ahead and throw it on that main menu panel. But since I just have the one, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it on the button itself. So I come down to scripts and just take a look here. Make sure I haven't already created it. And I haven't. So I'm going to go C sharp script and I'm going to call it play button. We'll go ahead, jump right in. And of course, the first thing I like to do, get rid of everything. Now, since we're going on going to go ahead and play around with the UI system. Remember what we have to add? Unity.UI. Now, I'm not going to bother playing around with the font or anything like that, or changing the text to anything. All I'm going to do is just set it up so that when we press this button, it loads up the other scene. So for that, we need a public function that does not return anything. And I'm just going to call it play game. Uh, we don't need to take any parameters into this, but just for demonstration sakes, I'm going to go ahead and put one in and it'll just be an integer. And I'll just call it level or scene. Call it whatever you want. It's the scene we want to load. For this, I'm just going to call it level. For some reason, when I'm in Unity, I refer to them as scenes because, well, that's what they're called. But when I'm coding, I almost always call them levels. All right, so now that that's done, all we want to do is just go ahead and load that scene. But again, we got to add one more using statement. Does anyone remember what it is? Unity engine dot scene management. There we go. Now we can say scene manager dot load scene. And since we're being passed in an in integer, that's exactly what we're going to load in. So int scene build index, which will be level. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. Come back in. Make sure to attach this to my play button, which I'm actually going to rename to play button. And I'm also going to rename the title to title. Might as well keep all this organized, right? We are going to be coming back to this, so we want to know what all this is. So we're gonna go ahead, take the play button. There it is, drop it on. And to be honest, like I said, I could have attached this script anywhere. It does not matter. But since I only had one button here, this is where I'm gonna put it. So if we went ahead and started the game, went ahead and clicked on it, it's not gonna do anything. And that's because we have to actually play with the events over here. So just a quick demo. It does work in the sense that when we click on it, it changes colors. And this is how you change the colors here for hovering and clicking. But it doesn't load any of the, the script up. What we have to do for that is go ahead and create an on click event. So we'll click this plus button down here. And we have the option to have it run at runtime or editor runtime or off. We only want it at runtime. We don't need it to work in the editor when the, when the game itself isn't playing in the editor. So we'll leave it at runtime and it's asking for the object. Now this is the object that you've just created uh, or that you attached that script we just created to which we attach it to the play button. So you just simply drag it in here. And now you get a list of functions. So if we open this up, now these are all the classes that are attached to this game object. But the one we created is way down here, play button. Part of me wishes these were alphabetical. It makes things a little easier, I guess, when you start getting a lot of scripts on things. But that's for a different video. If we come down to play button, we have a lot of options here that we didn't make. We're just looking for the one that we actually created. These are public methods that we get for being a mono behavior. Uh, we just want this one here, the play game, and it takes an int. 
So if we select that, now we have the option of what level we want to load. So we can put an integer in here. And if you try to put anything but an integer in there, when I'm typing letters, it doesn't work. So we know that what the level we want to load is one. If you're not sure, shift control B. Go ahead and take a look. And go ahead, save your scene. Go ahead, hit play. Now when it starts up, we should be able to hit that play button and go into our game. And there we go. Now, of course, depending on the size of your level and everything else that's running around in the background, it might take a second or two to load. But uh, we now have a function of button. You know how to make the button work. And we have a bit of a main menu. Now, for those following along in class, make sure you save this project because we are going to be coming back to it. And you are going to have to go ahead and implement some of the new features that we learn as we go along throughout this year. Or possibly even upgrade some of the systems that we have here with more advanced systems. For those that are, well, just following along on the internet, feel free to do whatever you want with it. But next week, we get to start a new game. Next week in, in class time, not video time. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.